everybody. I'm Deborah Piguet. Welcome to Winning with Deborah, where people turn to learn. Each week, we seek to gain from the experience and knowledge of believers who can help you succeed relationally, physically, emotionally, financially, and of course, spiritually. We want you to be informed and transformed as you learn how to apply the Bible to every aspect of your life. You know, there's nothing more exciting than setting a goal. For every goal we set, we need mentors, coaches, friends, family, or somebody to help us achieve it. We start out with great intentions, but often lose motivation or our methods and strategies prove to be ineffective. But even the greatest athletes of our day have personal coaches. Yes, we need others to help us succeed. And that's where our next guests come into play. Jeffrey and Wenda Hatchell are motivational speakers, personal development coaches, and Bible teachers. They not only have advanced degrees and quality training from premier institutions of learning, but they also have the practical experience and godly wisdom to show us how to breathe life into our careers, our relationships, and other troublesome areas. I met them recently when they were keynote speakers at a married couples conference. They are a powerful duo and they're making waves across the country through their company, Over the Top Coaching. They're here to tell us how to step into our personal greatness by leveraging who we are and what we are. Jeffrey and Wendy, welcome to Winning with Deborah. Thank, Thank you, Deborah. It's good to see you guys again. Yes. It's awesome to be yeah, here. Yeah, we had a great time here. last time, didn't we? <laughs> we yeah, did. we did. Yeah. 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 Okay, so tell us about your family because you have an awesome, beautiful, and interesting family. Sure. So we have a blended family of four children. Our oldest daughter is 22 years old, yes, Amen Offset, mm -hmm. and she is a professional singer and a student at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Our daughter, Janae, is eight. 18, and she's a freshman at Howard University Ooh. in D.C. We just dropped her off a few weeks ago. And then we have <laughs> Justin. Justin is a sophomore. He loves to play basketball, and he works out all the time. Wow, I bet he eats a lot, too. <laughs> you <laughs> <didn't know. laughs> Big Always. appetite. Yeah. Very big. And yeah. our youngest is Michaela Joy. She is 13 and in the eighth grade, doing mm -hmm. great and loves art. Wow, you have kids at that expensive age. You, you ain't <laughs> never going to have no money. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yes. So you that's great. That. Nah, I'm just playing. You're going to have some money. You already got money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want each of you to give me a, um, a, a, an example of your brief journey to Jesus. Sure. So I got saved when I was a teenager. I actually was raised in the church as a youth, but then my parents were divorced. So when I was in the teenage years, my siblings and I, we were the traditional siblings, but my sister, who's just three years older than me, Denise, she got saved at an early age, and she used to always come home and tell me about the Lord and about church. Mm -hmm. One particular day after summer camp, I went over one of my friend's house and he was telling us he was watching a minister on TV which got me and my friends talking about God. Next thing you know the Spirit of God and the presence of God came into that room literally convicted us. I remember what my sister told me was it's not about how you feel but just come to God as you are. Mm -hmm. I went and went into his bathroom repented and accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. Three of my other teenage friends did the same thing. So that was how I first came to the Lord. Now that's unusual. Yes, very. it is. Very wow. Much. Nobody was, it was, wasn't an altar call no, with people putting pressure no, on you and everybody was standing all. except no, you. No, <laughs> no minister, <laughs> no preacher, no pastor except wow. the Spirit of God called yeah, us. That's the power yeah. of the Spirit. And what about you, Wendy? Well, my path to salvation is not <laughs> like that. So very much different. I grew up in a family where my parents were um, in the nation of Islam. So we did not, um, learn about the Bible, there was no teachings about the Bible, and it wasn't until I was much, much older that I was led to Christ through my sister. Wow. She was a huge influence for me, and when she got saved and she started to express the love of God, it made me interested and it piqued my interest and I wanted to pursue him, but all the while he was actually pursuing me. Um, mm -hmm. So it was definitely like a relentless pursuit, I think, of my heart. and. In 2006 is when I gave my life to Christ. Wow. Now, where, where did you guys meet? Actually, at church. At church. Yes, yeah, we okay. were at church. Okay. I used to always see her at Bible study, growth groups, every service, prayer service. So she was the one always That's what you there. do when you're single. You need to <laughs> be in the church. And, and that's what, how I was. I was in the church at all times, dragging my daughter with me, as she would say, to everything that we had. And he also saw me, like, running 
and yeah, active and so exactly. that's, that's how we great. met. That's great. I like that. And I like how you said that when you're single, you know, you can kind of totally immerse yourself into serving God. Right. Even the Bible supports that. It talks yeah. about single, you know, married women caring about the things of their husband right. and the single ones can pursue God exactly. wholeheartedly. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like to get started with the uh, biblical basis for our discussion. Yes. And today we're going to look at Ephesians 3.20. Yes. I always ask the guests, to, you know, what's your favorite thing you want to, you know, what oh, script yeah. you want to, mm -hmm. and you chosen Ephesians yes. 3.20. In the Amplified Version, you guys crack me up because you said he likes the Amplified, amplified uh, Version. You like the... I no, like Amplified. He's he the likes King, King James, James Version. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. King James, the new King James. Okay, so which one do yeah. you, you want to start? You, okay, you like amplified. the Amplified. Whoever. Amplified. Okay, let's have it. Amplified. You know, we got to amplify it. So, <laughs> and we can do it together. Yeah. We, we'll see if we can let's do it together. Let's see if we can do it together. Okay, this is a test. Let's see if you can do it together. So Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose, and, and do super, super abundantly more, more than, than all, all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, prayers hopes, and dreams, dreams according, according to his power that is at work within us. us. Oh, you guys but get an A. I tracked you. I had it written down and you didn't <laughs> miss a word. I love it. That's awesome. Yes. Okay, so then you you have a um, an acronym that you teach from this part yes. of your core message. That's right. And it's called HOPE. And that's why we're entitling this, uh, this thing the, the power of hope. Yes. Explain the HOPE acronym. Sure. So H-O-P-E. H meaning have a big dream. And when I say have the big dream, when we went to coaching training, they taught us the word BHAG goals, meaning big, big hairy, hairy audacious goals. goals. Exactly. Yes, yes. And, and I'll even say those things that we can't do without God. And mm -hmm. even to your point, the things that God put on the inside of us to do. So have a big goal. Well, stay right there a minute, because sure. most of us, mm -hmm. we, we dream too small, don't we? Oh, no doubt about it. Yes. We don't go for what's really in our heart. We're hesitant. We're fearful and concerned. What if mm -hmm. it doesn't work out? What if things don't happen? What if I right. go for it and fail? And it causes us not to actually go for the big dreams because mm -hmm. so many people want to play it safe and just mm -hmm. do those things that they think or that they know they can achieve right. versus using our faith to pursue what God really put in our heart. And I always say that that brings, we, we make an attempt to bring God down to the level of our knowledge yeah. and experience. And I've exactly. been there where I've tried to limit God to that. And then there for came sure. a time when the requirement for me to perform or to do something or to know something was way beyond right. my right. my training. Mm -hmm. And then sure. I had to just say, God, you better show up here. Right. <laughs> right. And, he, exactly. and he did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, so what's the next letter? So O, O meaning overcome obstacles. Mm -hmm. Understanding that as you pursue anything that's beyond what you've done, as you pursue a God goal, you're going to run into some challenges. Yes. You're going to have opposition. You're going to have some challenges that we're going to have to go through. And part of that is understanding it's part of the process. Mm -hmm. And once we start to have the mindset that, oh, this is just part of the process, right. I'm going to have some obstacles. I'm going to have some challenges, recognizing clearly in the Bible there's all types of things that came up. When he told them to possess the land, that there were giants in the land. There right. was opposition. Yeah. So knowing that there's always going to be opposition. Position, but we have to have the mindset that we are more than conquerors through mm -hmm. him who loved us. So obviously yeah. you guys like the Bible too. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I, I like the Bible, too. I, I yes. just think that is so important. We can't overemphasize that because I know the world would teach you a lot. You need a mantra. Listen, your right. mantra needs to come straight from the Bible. No doubt. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Because, you know, I'm always reminded of that story of David and Goliath, which to me yeah. is so symbolic of just sure. opposition. But right. I like what Goliath said. I, I have a message I teach that says Goliath was right because okay. he said if he told David uh, he, and he told the Israelites, Goliath did, if you fight me yes. and kill me, mm -hmm. we'll be your servants. In other right. words, if you resist me and take yeah. authority of me, then mm -hmm. I, I, you won't be serving this giant anymore, you know? Right, he right. said, but if, but if, he said, but if, if you prevail, right. mm -hmm, then we'll yeah. serve you. So in other words, yeah. you overcome. There you go. Yes. You overcome. Right. Yes. And I like it that the word says we're overcomers. We are. Right. Not just overcomers, but more, more than, than conquerors. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I, you know, I, I think we should embrace obstacles. Yeah. You know, yes. I don't think we should run from them. I think right. we just need to run towards them. Yeah. 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 So what are, what are some obstacles you guys have overcome? <laughs> I got mm. a big one. Uh, so I'll, I'll even briefly, in the book, I, I highlight that I was pursuing the goal of going for my dream of becoming a independent corporate trainer and to be out there and speaking and to be independent. I went for it and part of that process was I ended up going to a training company to learn about the industry, to work for it. And after working there one year, I was fired. 
Oh, I'm no. Tired. So you can only imagine going for your dream and then mm -hmm. something like that happening. It's like I'm doing all that I know to do, and it apparently, short term, in that mm -hmm. season, it didn't appear to work out. So I had to literally overcome the perception of failure and understanding it's just part of the bigger picture. But stop right there, because some people, especially men, I'm not making this as a sure. blanket thing, but 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 being fired like that when you yeah. see yourself as the provider, what did that do to your psyche or your ego? Uh, or uh, what, it, Walk us um, through that. It, it almost it makes me feel like, you know, demoralized. You know, as a man, it's just like, okay, how can I get fired? And quite honestly, having, I felt like I had a great background, great resume, worked with a lot of Fortune mm -hmm. 50 organizations, you know, have an MBA, all those types of things. Then to go for something and then to fail, it really made me feel heartbroken and almost to the point of being upset with God mm. because I felt that that was something that God had put in my heart to do and thinking that, okay, I'm going to go for it and have the testimony of, and then he lived happily ever after. Right. <laughs> and knowing right. that sometimes that's not the case for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it's now part of a bigger testimony to be able to share. Oh, yeah. I love it. You know, I always say the the path to success is sometimes like this. You know, you go up and, right. you know, you get your degree, mm -hmm. then you get fired, and yeah. then something really great happens, and exactly. then this happens, you know. Right. But you keep going. Exactly. You know, we used to have an old song we sang, um, mm -hmm. each victory, it was like, yield not to temptation, but it says sure. each victory will help you yes. some mm -hmm. other to win, meaning yes. for every Amen. victory you overcome, it helps you, qualifies yeah. you for the next level. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's continue with the acronym. So we overcome obstacles. Mm -hmm. we, well, first we had a big audacious goal, yep. right. BHAG, y'all exactly. yeah, learned that term now, BHAG, <laughs> big, hairy, audacious goal. Yes. Yes. And then we talked about overcoming obstacles. What's mm -hmm. the P for? Perceive the best in every situation. Ooh, and what I mean by that is sometimes when things don't appear to look great, we have to put our faith eyes on mm -hmm. or really see through, see things through the eyes of faith that, you know what, I see that this is working out for my ultimate good, according to Romans 8 and 28. Yes, yes. that's my life scripture. Yes. yes, we have to really embrace it because, you know, we go to church, we go to Bible study, and we learn all this good word, and sometimes when we go through challenging situations, we forget. Mm -hmm. We forget what we know. We forget that's the reason why he said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. That's why he said faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word because it has to be a continual process that's why we have to renew our minds it's right. a continual process so to be able to perceive it's really having the eyes of faith to be able to see in spite of this may look in the natural mm -hmm. I believe according to God's word that this is going to work together for my good right. how do you get there though Wendy how do you get to that point where you you perceive like that, that, right. that that's your first line of defense to say this is working together for my good right what, what do you do so as as Jeff was speaking I was thinking to myself that's not always easy to perceive the best. It just doesn't come naturally like it does for Jeff, for all of us. Yes. But one of the ways that I feel like you can perceive the best, it has to be practiced. You have mm. to be in a position where you're stretched and you're pulled out of your comfort zone, and then you have to practice, okay, instead of looking at this cup half empty, I'm going to look at it half full. Mm. So it's, it's um, just opening yourself up to a new way of seeing things. It's renewing your mind, as the word says, thinking differently. So in any situation, the automatic first thing that I would do, do the opposite. Yes. And begin to practice that. I had a mentor told me that. Whatever your flesh is telling you to do, think, yes. do the opposite. Yes. And you know, listen, I'm not kidding. I, I, I make up a song. Well, I make the song up. <laughs> There's a song, and then I always say, I still have joy. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm not going to sing it for y'all today. <laughs> but, but no matter what's going down, and I mean, right. I just had so many things go wrong yesterday, and I just started uh, laughing. Right, <laughs> I just right. started laughing. laughing. I said, exactly. you know what? And, and the song says, I still have joy. I still yes. have joy. Yes. Oh, all the things I've been through, I still have joy. Yes. I need to tell myself that because faith comes by hearing right, yes. and if you're right. going to develop that divine perspective on right. everything you yes. need to just hear yourself need to hear yourself yes. saying yes. that because exactly. sometimes you do it not because you feel it but because you know it's the truth right, right. I'm right there I'm right there in my yes. own journey yes. right yes. now I'm just, yes. it is the truth all right yes. so you got to perceive it. the best yes. have a have a keep a divine perspective yes. Yes. and the only way to yes. do that is to keep the word of God yes. fresh in you I, exactly. I had an old pastor who used to say he said mm -hmm. um, and there was a toothpaste called Ipana yeah okay. this is I must I must be a hundred years old <laughs> <laughs> they took it out of circulation like 100 years ago. But this is what he would say. He said, what do you get when you squeeze a tube of iPad of toothpaste? And we'd all say, a toothpaste. He said, nope. 
you get a pan of toothpaste. <laughs> I'm like, okay. okay. He said, because whatever is in you when you are squeezed, right. that's exactly what comes out of you. That's good. Yeah, that's exactly what comes out of you. So you need the word to be in there. Right. So when you are squeezed, what comes out of you right. is the truth that you know. Out yes. of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There you yes. go. Yes. Amen. Okay, so we have a big goal. We overcome obstacles. We perceive the best, and then we expect to receive. Mm -hmm. Expect. So we Ooh. have to be in a position of expectation. Mm -hmm. where we are looking for something good to happen for yes. us. And being in a position of expectation is that whatever it is that you're believing God for, that something is going to happen that's going to lead me towards that. Yet, mm -hmm. understanding that faith without works is dead, so we have a part to play that leads towards that expectation. Mm -hmm. I also like to remind people to remember when we were children, and you remember how we used to feel on Christmas Eve? You know, that yeah. feeling of excitement <laughs> because we knew there were going to be some great presents under that tree mm -hmm. just for us. And we would just be in expectation of looking for something good. Right. And we need to also have that even as adults and as professionals be an expectation of something good is going mm -hmm. to happen because yes. as we expect and as we believe in our heart that's what we actually receive mm -hmm. I think expectation is critical oh, no yes. doubt it, it is you know and and yes. the expectation has to be of God I expect yes. God to do something exactly. I think right. when we get our eyes off of people and right. just say no matter what they're doing Lord my expectation is from you that's what right. this the, right. what is that Psalm 62 5 yes. mm -hmm. my soul wait only upon yes. God mm -hmm. my expectation yes. is from right. him I just expect Expect God, no matter yeah. what's going down. Yeah. It may right. even be an inequity. That's sure. what I've had to stand on that all my life. Oh, yeah. It may be a, an obvious inequity, but my right. expectation is that you're going to work this out right. for yes. my good. Exactly. Yes. So I think that's a good one. So hope. Yes. So there's lots of faith that we need to put in our hope. Okay, now Jeffrey, you've written this book, yes. The Inspired Career. Yes. Business book, <laughs> and you have more endorsements on here, like big name people. Mm -hmm. What's this book about? So The Inspired Career. Breathe new life into your job and get equipped, empowered, and engaged. This is a book that's about leadership inspiration and leadership development. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, it's I divide it into two halves. The first half is to literally breathe new life into others mm -hmm. because the Gallup organization has a poll oh, yeah. that they did, and it actually said that about 90% of the people in the U.S. hate their, hate jobs. their jobs. Frustrated. I know. Frustrated. Can you believe that? It sounds crazy that that many people are unfulfilled. Mm -hmm unhappy going just to get a paycheck but mm -hmm. not fulfilled or living by their values right. so there is a big need that people really do need to breathe life into their situation to live by their values and then to get some foundational leadership principles to understand what can I do in my role mm -hmm. not necessarily having the title of a manager as a vice president mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but wherever I am that I can perceive myself as a leader right. we like to define leadership as Influence. Influence. influence, yes. Influence, yes. being a person of influence. Right. And then I know you like to talk about, you know, us being an ambassador and representatives and right. who we are in Christ. Right. But remembering that. Yes, just, I, I love the book, the part about the book that, you know, you can inspire someone and motivate someone, and, but once you do that, what happens after that? Like, you're mm -hmm. not really there to keep them going. And the beauty in the book is that in that second half of the book, that it does give you the tools and the practical yes. ways of now with that inspiration and motivation, how can you transform into this person that you want to be? And a leader is not always someone who is telling you what to do and being directive and autonomous, but it's someone who is a person of influence. So well, I think I maybe we don't influence. see ourselves as leaders, but I, you you're absolutely right, and I learned that from John Maxwell. Yes. I'm a proud John Maxwell trained leadership coach, <laughs> oh, but he right. always says leadership is influence, yes. Yes. and we're all influencing somebody, whether right. it's not right. it's just our neighbor or our family. Yep. You know, yep. we're all influencing somebody, yes. and you mm -hmm. talked about that at a recent conference where you talked mm -hmm. about it's not enough to just hope, but right. that we got to prepare to That's succeed. Right. Let's take a look. There was a quote that said, I could help many people get what they want, but the problem is most people don't know what they want. It's just being able to make a decision and deciding what is it that you want, that God has put in your heart, that is a God desire, that some, which is something that typically persists over time, to be able to go for that. One of the other things I observe watching sports, especially basketball, you notice how if you go to a game or even watch a game, the beginning of a game, you may notice when the players in the beginning of the game, they're doing something to get ready for the game. So you'll notice before they start to announce them, they'll kind of be in the tunnel and they'll come out. One of the things you'll notice as they're calling like the top five, you'll notice that. You with me? They're getting pumped. What are they doing? They're getting pumped up. It's like, all right, 
All right, I know, you know, we're about to get out there. We're about to play our game. They are pumping themselves up. They're getting the adrenaline flowing. Even a tennis player, if you play tennis, you're going to be on the receiving end. What are you doing? You're getting ready. You're waiting for that ball to come. It's about to come. You're getting ready for the return because it's coming. So what are we doing to get ourselves in a position of readiness for the things of God? So when you're looking about the excitement of God and being expectation, be in a position Position yourself to be in a position to receive, to believe that it's coming, that it's on its way. And I am going to be in a position to receive because I believe that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Look at your neighbor and say, the best is yet to come. Wow, Jeffrey, I think that you made that point there. Yeah. But, you know, you talked about the importance of doing something about it. You can't sure. just hope and, you right. know, and, and wish and hope God just shows up and, you know, somehow yeah. or another he'll send somebody across your path while you're sitting there watching television. But you said that people don't like to change. We don't want to do right. the thing that we need to do. And that you also said that um, about 65% of the uh, population yeah. prefer this, well, the status quo. Sure. Why, why do we not like change? Yeah, most people don't like change because change creates or causes us to have to do something different. Mm -hmm. We tend to become, in many cases, complacent. We like our old slippers. We like that <laughs> old robe. We don't want to have to change it out because it feels so good. We like to sit in the same place at of church course. and somebody exactly. comes and they got our seat. Like, Wait a minute. Always. Exactly. <laughs> so people tend to resist it because they have a comfort level. We drive the same way to work every day or mm -hmm. wherever it is we're going. Those types of things, it causes us to have to make an initiation to do something different. Mm -hmm. We actually have to make a choice and that right. takes effort that takes a shift in mindset mm -hmm. and many people choose not to because this feels so good and this is okay and things aren't so bad they're all right versus being stretched on a regular right. basis yeah. now I see so what can we tell people to do I, this is what I, I say if you want to start practicing being a change agent or just right. change for yourself sure just do just one little thing different yeah. like go right. a different way to work right. Yes. <laughs> right. exactly. it doesn't have to always be something huge to your point it right. can be something a small change that you make along the way and I always say just embrace change almost create change in your life proactively instead yeah. of it being because most of the time we think change is negative because it's forced upon us and then we have to operate in that change that we had no a part right. in that we didn't create so yeah. why not kind of redesign how we live our lives look at okay I've been doing this this way for so long what if I did a different way well that's good yeah. that's good I I, yeah. I, I, I want to try that because I, I yeah. like change Sure. I'm always changed. I make people go crazy. <laughs> like, let's do it this way this right, time. You know, when right. I was in corporate America, yeah. I knew I was driving them crazy. Well, we yeah. used to do it this way. It's like, right. now we got to do something else, right. okay? Exactly. Now, speaking of that, though, are leaders, you talk about leadership a lot. Are leaders born or are they developed? I mean, you hear that all the time. Are leaders sure. born? Are you, are you just mm -hmm. born to be a natural leader or what? Right. Sure. So we, mm -hmm. we have two perspectives on it. So, right. so the first is that we do believe that leaders can be developed. Right. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you can grow, you can develop, and become more of a leader. Mm -hmm. We also believe that we were born, born with, with gifts. gifts. Okay. You know, God creates in us certain unique talents and gifts, and it's, I think, our responsibility to begin to develop those gifts and those talents. And the leadership part of that, that person of influence, becomes when you have honed in on that gift and you become, you know, you start to operate in it and you develop it, is when you become that person of influence and you're leading in that area. So it definitely you can be developed into a leader. But suppose you don't want to be a leader. <laughs> <laughs> really, you know how some yeah. people are just, sure. some, you know, in a certain environment, you sure. just emerge as the leader and then other people right. like to follow. Yeah. Is, is that okay if you just don't want to be a leader? I, well, I, think, <laughs> yeah. I, I always know. think about yeah. in the Bible how Jesus had mm -hmm. the disciples. Okay. And they were, initially they were followers, but he called them to be ambassadors in the earth. And if you're going to be an ambassador, you have to be someone who is able to influence others. And so at some point, are you living your best life? Are you living the purpose-filled life that God has called you to if you're not leading in some way? And what about in a family? Because I know you sure. guys cover the family as well. Suppose, mm -hmm. you know, you do emerge as the leader and you say, sure. why do I always have to lead these people? Should you just accept that as your role, your God-given role? Or, you, or, or And how do you go about then, if that is your God-given role, mm -hmm. how do you kind of bring other people up so that you train them? Because one of the functions mm -hmm. of a leader is to train other people. Right, right. 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 Yeah, yes. we definitely believe if you feel like you're in a role within the family and you're always thrown in, in a leadership role, mm -hmm. that you should help to empower others. 
and right. help them to see who they are. To your point, sometimes we all need someone else to encourage us. And if we just keep taking the same role that we've already always had, and there's mm -hmm. others who are sitting on the sidelines, then we're not necessarily helping them. Right. In some cases, we may be disabling them yeah. or enabling them to be bystanders versus helping to bring out the best in others Ooh, that's by good. encouraging them. And like, you know what? We can share in this, right. and it allows others to be able to discover some of their gifts. Well, I, I have an example. Um, my family was in super turmoil, just clashing with each other. So mm -hmm. recently, in the last few months, we started a prayer line. Oh, Beautiful. Wow. Yes, and Wonderful. now we have people, but see, they're not used to praying like that. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, you know, I would, say, I would give them the opportunity to pray, but sure. I'm like, no, we want you to pray for us. Yeah. And so wow. I'm thinking like, okay, I'm not going to do this. And right. so what I did was, at the end of each prayer, maybe I'll do most of the praying, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'll say, we're now going to have a sentence prayer. I just want everybody right. to just, mm -hmm. just make one sentence, a sentence yeah. prayer. Everybody can do that. Right. You see, right. so, you know, right. maybe in a few weeks they have to do a paragraph prayer. I don't wow. know, but, <laughs> but it's working. It. Now, right. now, Jeffrey, what do you want people to take away from this book, The Inspired Career? What do, what do you want people to take away? Sure. So I want them, first of all, to understand that they are a leader, that God called them mm -hmm. to be a person of yes. influence and to be willing to embrace who they really are and to stretch themselves, to go for what God has mm -hmm. put in their heart, to be willing to say that I have or I can do all things through Christ who yes. strengthens me, yes. to understand that God will give us the desires of our heart, to understand that the word is for us if we are willing to embrace it. So I wrote mm -hmm. this book as a way of inspiring others to stir up the gift that's on the inside yes. of them, to recognize who they really are, and to be willing to develop their gifts to the help to build the kingdom of God and to be all that God called them to be, do, and have. Now, what about, can you speak particularly to men oh, as yeah. leader, as the leader in the home? Sure. And how important that is for the woman to submit is sure. in order, can you speak sure. to that a little bit? Sure, so for the man to be a leader in the home, he has to step into that, meaning part of leadership is it's earned. Sometimes we, hey, because I have this title, you listen mm -hmm. to me, and all those types of things, versus am I walking out the word? Am I demonstrating the love of God? Mm -hmm. Am I helping to feed and develop my spouse, mm -hmm. my children, with the word of God? If we are walking out this word, then they will be more inclined to want to listen, yes. to want to do whatever they can to support the vision that God has for the house. I love that, and, and I can tell you my husband is a great spiritual yes. leader, and so there have been times when he, he said, okay, I believe God is calling you to do something else in your career, and I'm thinking like, well, because I know he hears from God, I'm like, yes. I, I better yes. not rebel here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, better, I better go with yes. the program. Well, in our closing moments, I know that you guys have developed a collection of scriptures to help people People, yes. uh, the people who hate their jobs or people right. who want to go to another level. Yes. Can you just tell us what that tool is about? And I know it's available free on your website, sure. Over the Top Coaching. Yes, yes. Tell us right. what you have for us there. Yes. yes. So at, on the website, there is a tip sheet, basically, and it's scriptures that help inspire you and motivate you to overcome obstacles. And the obstacles could be in your job, but it could be in personal life as well. And so there are a collection of scriptures that you speak to yourself in those mm -hmm. moments where you feel like, you know, this is not going the way that I want it to, or you know what, I want to venture out and do something different, but it doesn't look like the way that I wanted it to look. And then so there are scriptures there that say that you can be all that God created you to be, and you speak that into your life. I yes. love it. Any closing thoughts, comments you want to make? Yes, thank you for having us on the <laughs> yes. program. We really appreciate yes. this. This is a blessing, and we just want your audience to know that God has so much in store for them, and that the best and is yet, yet to, come. to come. I believe that. Thank you Amen. so much for joining me today, and I know my audience has been empowered, and just thank you for being people of the word. Yes. God bless thank you. you. Thank you. God bless. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If this program has blessed or impacted you in any way, I would love to hear your comments. Please visit me on Facebook at Winning with Deborah or on my website, winningwithdeborah.com. There you may read an excerpt from my book, 30 Days to a Stronger, More Competent You. You will also find other information there to empower you in your walk with the Lord. So until next time, have a winning week.